Hi, I'm at Telco AI Summit Europe and I'm joined by Emen Greda Ben Yahya from Orange Group. So can you tell me a little bit about why CSPs should transform the way they're currently monitoring their networks? Yeah, sure. So first of all, uh, let me recall what is network performance monitoring. So network performance monitoring tools help us to track the performance of the services and the underlying network equipment that uh, fulfill those services. So uh, the, basically the goal is to be able to um, uh, detect the events on the network, events by means of failure, congestion, uh, outages, etc. The event that we as operational team need to take care about and prevent them from happening. So today the network performance monitoring tools, we rely on a live collection of performance and then we compare this to a baseline uh, that we predefined it in, in, uh, from the beginning. Uh, and we also can, through these network performance tools, collect the KPIs like usability of the resources, availability, and other, uh, and other KPIs. Uh, the, the, the goal of all that is to be, uh, as I said, able to track all the events that are happening in the network, maintain this performance that we contracted to our customer and ensure the customer experience. So uh, why we need to change them? Because uh, basically we can talk about three or four dimensions here. So the first one that all, all operators are aware of the transformation of the network with SDN and NAV. And these paradigms introduce in the network new layers to be monitored. And uh, when I say new layers to be, to be monitored, it's not in a silo uh, way. Uh, it's with uh, while ensuring the dependencies between these layers. So we have metrics in the hardware level and the software level and on the level of the network function itself. And this dependency is um, is changing all the time. It's not the static way we used to have, let's say, in, in legacy networks. So this dependency is dynamic and we need to take, uh, let's say, new tools that enable us to track this dependency and be able to, to correlate these alarms together. This is one dimension, which is the softwareization of the network. The second one is the 5G. So 5G is happening. We have the first network 5G today in, in uh, Orange, Romania. And uh, by 5G, we mean also the on-demand and the uh, customization of slicing. And to do that, we need to be able to, uh, to, um, to measure the metrics with respect to new domains, like, for example, the e-health or smart cities or smart grid. Uh, those KPIs, we are not used, let's say, to map them to the network and to the raw data network. So there is a big challenge to make this happen from uh, the KPIs that we know, we master, and we used to uh, monitor, and the new KPIs from these new domains that we need to integrate correctly uh, to track them uh, correctly. Uh, the, the, the last, let's say, maybe dimension is that we already have uh, advanced monitoring tools today, but these are siloed per domain, for example, for radio access network, for core network. And the fact, um, the fact that these are siloed today, uh, it, it is, uh, let's say, kind of bottleneck toward a rapid root cause analysis. So we need to have this end-to-end -end, uh, understanding of the metrics that we are uh, collecting and monitoring in order to be able to detect uh, in advance. And if we didn't detect, then we can uh, react rapidly through a rapid root cause analysis. That's great. And can you tell me um, what the new methodologies that CSB should in place um, regarding the challenges? Yeah. Uh, so uh, to face this new transformation in the network, we need, for example, to take into account new data sources. So uh, besides the network data, we need to take into account, for example, data coming from the point of interest, data coming from the weather forecast, uh, from the uh, transport traffic. All this data may impact the network, uh, the network uh, behavior and the network uh, availability. So we need to be to work on data fusion techniques and uh, sophisticated stream correlations of data in order to fuse all this data together and be able, for example, to uh, predict with a high precision if there is uh, a peak of network capacity uh, in a given uh, geographical region and uh, adapt the network uh, rapidly before the problems uh, happen in the network. So this is one area of new advances that we need to put in place. The second one is to have uh, this um, we used to have, for example, today, uh, lots of alarms, a lot of trouble tickets, and this will continue to happen, actually. But we need to have uh, uh, more machine learning embedded in the alarm systems in order to have uh, smart filtering of the alarms, the prediction of the severity of the alarms. Uh, we can also, um, uh, yeah, for the alarms. Uh, no? Uh, so uh, another area could be also the um, the uh, capacity forecasting. So today we are having uh, we are having we're already having that uh, in place. But the idea is to have it from an end-to-end -end point of view, and instead of working on let's say uh, in. Um, 
in long term, let's say, uh, forecasting, we need also to have a very short term forecasting in order to detect if there is a problem to happen, let's say, in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes and be able to have recovery actions put in place. So the idea is to have a balance between the how far, how long we can forecast and the techniques uh, in terms of recovery that we can put in place. Uh, another area could be also the online uh, online uh, detection of anomalies. We already uh, also working on the offline detection of anomaly, but also online detection of anomalies is, um, uh, is a good step to have in the network. The difficulty is always the heterogeneity and the complexity of network data. So online approaches are difficult with respect to this heterogeneity of the data, but this is a, a strong area that will help us to understand what is happening in the network and be able to detect uh, let's say, the anomalies on the fly, where the streams of data are coming. Yeah, another, uh, another um, aspect with respect to the monitoring could be also the, uh, to represent the network into a graph, because as I said, the dependency is uh, becoming complex to manage and without capturing this dependency between the network, uh, the network equipment, devices and the services and all the um, uh, elements within the, the, the network management, it's difficult to predict what is going to happen because it's not one-to-one -one, uh, connection. So the idea is to be able to represent a dynamic graph of the network and feed that to uh, machine learning and deep learning algorithm in order to be able to detect all the, let's say, uh, the changes on the network and track uh, any failures or any outages there. Last but not least, so all this is to understand what is happening, but the big area is also all the recommendation and actuation techniques, which today are uh, majorly predefined, so we know we, we can predict what is going to happen, but then we have actions that are predefined and then we trigger them and we, we cover the problem. But the idea is to be able to learn from the past configuration, to learn from the past, uh, let's say, action that the operational team uh, um, undertook on the network, and from there put them in a machine readable format and be able to learn from our, uh, let's say, uh, past actuation and recommendation systems in order to be able to, uh, to, to put in place, uh, let's say, an automatic uh, learning by interaction for the network. So it's uh, two, let's say, two big areas to, to, to come on that. Yeah. That's great. Can you tell me um, how um, CSPs can reach these targets? Um, for example, with um, the right data sets and the change in culture? Uh, first of all, we need to work on the cross-fertilization between uh, the uh, different experts involved in the development of network solution with machine learning and deep learning. And this basically uh, involves the data scientist, the network expert, and also uh, with a clear business value. So what we will gain from uh, putting, for example, this solution in place and how this will help our operational to better understand what is happening in the network. So the second dimension, it's more from the data point of view. So are, uh, we are uh, investigating and working on advanced techniques on how to label the data. We have uh, lots of data as a network operator, but it's very complex and heterogeneous and all operators are aware of that. Uh, so we are working on uh, advanced techniques on how to label the data to gain more insight and extract more information from that data and apply, let's say, uh, um, a bunch of supervised learning approaches on that, of course, with other approaches like unsupervised and reinforcement learning, but the data labeling will let us gain a lot of insights from our data. Uh, the third point could be, uh, yes, a big change, and it is already happening uh, today. We have, for example, in Orange, a new, a new data direction, uh, data and AI direction, and uh, the data and the data and AI direction. Uh, the ambition, including the network, is to capitalize more on what we are doing in AI uh, for the network and, uh, and other domains, and be able to uh, to have faster deployment in our affiliates and faster, I mean, capitalize on what we are doing and grow faster uh, on that. Yeah. Uh, so last but not least, to summarize what we, uh, what we are putting in place is the network intelligence uh, approach and pipeline. The network is different from images, it's different from videos and different from text. So applying machine learning and deep learning on the network requires to put in place um, uh, a typical, let's say, um, a specific approach that is uh, applicable on the network with the whole pipelines from the data preparation, the data filtering, until, the, uh, until feeding the machine learning and deep learning approach. And of course, with the uh, evaluation with metrics and KPIs that our operational teams uh, are, um, could understand and use in their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, supervision and other operations. Uh, that's great, thanks for that. And can you also tell us um, why you like to speak at Telco AI Summit Europe and um, 
what um, the new content has been like for you? Yeah, actually, the, the, the event is great because it's, um, it's uh, an AI with telco players. I mean, I've been attending other events where AI is in different domains, but this one is very specific to telcos, to operators. So we are talking about our challenges, about our achievement. And it's very nice to hear that we are, let's say, all, uh, uh, we have, let's say, consensus about the challenges. And the orientation, it's good also to see what other operators are doing and to validate that we are also on the same orientation, on the same, uh, or we have the same target. So in, in that sense, it's really uh, powerful because we are gaining uh, insights from uh, uh, operators, other operators, and also sharing our experience. So it's very, uh, the cross fertilization is very natural, yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you. And um, I look forward to seeing you at the next event. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, take care.